Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to learn together what is state management. When we want to talk about what is state, we want to go about the basics of state management and at the end we want to talk about different approaches in Flutter and in other technologies. And now without further ado, let's get started. So the first question that I want to answer is why is state management important? And why is it such a big and huge topic in Flutter? Flutter has its own state management process called set state. We will talk about that later more. But that leads to uh, like a, a necessi necessity to manage state all over the place. And the computer is nothing else than a state machine, right? So it complains, it works with different states and show the users different possibilities of state. So a calculation is nothing else than a combination of states. So state management is nothing new. It is just getting new defined by Facebook when they come into trouble with a very big bug. And now we have a certain approach how we manage this state in our applications. And this is why state management is so important to us nowadays. Now let's begin with defining state. State is one part of computer science technology. And I figured out here from Technopedia a very good definition that I will read now for you guys. In computer science, the state of a program is defined as its condition regarding stored inputs. The term state here is used similar to how it is used in science. Whereas the state of an object, for instance, as gas, liquid, solid, its current physical makeup, the state of computer program shows its current values or contents. So what does it mean for us? You will see now hopefully some um, Twitter feeds where I asked what is state actually because we talk a lot about state management but what is actually state and what I figured out when I boiled all the, your answers down is state is nothing else than a collection of variables uh, at a certain amount of time called stored inputs in that case from the definition and the state of a computer program shows its current states uh, current values uh, or contents. So why are there reasons for state management? Well, there are plenty of them. One of them is state information in a computer or in technology is always very versatile. That means we have different parts of state. We have booleans, strings, we have objects, complex objects, different objects. So all of this stuff is state that we have to manage and understand. The second thing is, it is very difficult to obtain. So how do you find out where is the state changed from where? What are the different boundaries? Where do you get more information about your state? All of these things were un more unclear before the state management process happened. Sometimes not clear structured. That is a very good point. So that means state is sometimes just a collection of variables that could be in a class or something else. History is very hard to track. So if you want to jump back in different uh, timestamps of your state, you will get some issues. And that leads in the long run to bugs and problems that we have to solve. So what are the usual trade-offs? The more you invest time, resources and so on into state management principles, you will come into these three points that I will explain now to you. And these three points getting bigger and bigger, the more you invest into state management. So the first point is you will have more concepts to follow, right? Because if you invest into a certain strategy of your architecture, you get more boundaries and more uh, rules that you have to follow all along and that you have to explain to new team members, to two team members that are in your team and to yourself all the time that you are making very concise that you stay all over your application the same way and the same behavior because the worst thing that could happen is you have suddenly two state management uh, ways that you take or even three and you have to distinguish the things and you have to understand all of them the second thing is mostly more boilerplate. So boilerplate is code that is not for your functions or your business functions that you want to implement. So if you want to create a feature, 
you will have more boilerplate with very amount uh, with different amounts depending on your state management behavior so if you want to be concise and you invest a lot in state management usually it comes with the trade-off of more boilerplate and the last point is short-term productivity and long-term productivity short-term pro productivity is if you don't care so much about state management you will of course solve your problems way faster in the beginning and you will have not coming with these starting problems you will not write so much uh, or as much boilerplate as other developers do but in the long run in the long-term productivity it could lead to some issues because you maybe have to introduce a state management core principle and that will take time effort and also some costs so these are the two, three points of the trade-offs that you can have in state management that you have to be aware of. Now I want to make a round trip about different technologies of state management that are already existent. And I think the famous one is Redux from React. Um, former from, uh, it was the technology Flux from Facebook and Redux was the next generation more or less. And now I think they work on a third level that called Recoil. It is a unidirectional workflow. So that means you create a store from the store, the data go to a provider that goes to a container, goes to a component, is visualized on the client, gets an action from the user, the action gets reduced by a reducer and the reducer saves the stuff into the store. So you see it is always a circle and it's uh, in one direction. On the other side I showed you an example of NGRX state management. NGRX comes from the Angular world and is more or less created out of the idea that Redux has but for Angular. And what you can see is here we have also a store, we talk with the selectors to the components, we create actions that the user dispatch and that gets reduced into the store. Here we have also side effects that you can see as an effect which goes to services, APIs and different things. <clears throat> and because I know a lot of you love Vue.js, I don't want to miss out the state management system of Vue called Vuex. You have there a possibility that you uh, see here where you have Vue components which dispatch actions, the actions gets commits to mutations, they change the state and the state gets revisualized in the Vue components. But now let's talk about Flutter because it's a Flutter channel, right? So the first thing Flutter is declarative. Declarative means we have a UI and the UI is displayed as a function from the state. So that means whenever we run a certain function with a state, we get our UI as a relation. So that is actually something. And this shows us already that we have some kind of state management already in place. So the developers of Flutter thought about that problem and thought, okay, we have to have some, uh, at least a basic state management principle in place. So we can work with that. And how is it called? It is the set state pattern. And the set state pattern, most of you will understand and know already, we have state full and state less widgets. I already created a video for that up there in the info box and down in the video description below. In a state full widget, we have a state that we track and the state can be mutable, so it can change over time. And then we have to call set state, which is a re-trigger of the build function. And with that, we show on the UI, as you know, the function of state is the UI. So with the re-trigger of the build function, with the new state, we create the UI that reflects the current state. Now that we know how state management works and what Flutter provides us already out of the box, we want to talk about different packages that you can use in your project to help you with state management and how much the effort is with them. So we want to begin the different packages with the provider package. The provider package is created by Remy Roslet, who created the idea out of the inherited widget that already exists inside of the Flutter framework. The provider package is very easy to use and it has a very easy core principle at the end, but it could lead in the, f in the long run to a lot of boilerplate. But to that, we will talk later more in a different video. Block 
business logic component. One of the most famous one in Flutter because it has a lot of information, a, a very huge fan base and it is very uh, popular in the Flutter community. You can see how the block pattern works in the presentation. We have a, um, a UI that triggers an event or dispatches an event to the block. The block is calculating and doing the stuff and then send an asynchronous request to the data or the store. And the data sends an asynchronous response back to the block and that computes the state to the UI. The next package on our list is the Redux package. Redux package comes directly from the React Redux package to Flutter and co contains the same core principles. You have a single source of truth, that means one store that contains all the data. Second, state is read-only, that means the state is immutable and has to be recreated all the time when you change something inside of the state. And last but not least, changes are made out of pure functions, so you have the possibility to test them very easily. Another package that I would like to introduce you is the States Rebuilder. States Rebuilder gives you the opportunity to work very easily with a state management tool and it also provides you to remove as much boilerplate as possible with the benefit that you have to be very strict in your working direction. So if you're working with States Rebuilder, it provides you an architecture that is uh, that you have to follow. So I just added these two images which just show you how they work and you can see the state is notifying the UI, the UI triggers a state, uh, a set state method somewhere, have some side effects and changes the state. So pretty easy and you have the benefit to separate the concerns from the UI and the business logic. The MobX package is one of my favorites because it has multiple stores. You have actions that uh, mutate observables. The observables notify the reactions, giving side effects, like for example, reading something from a database, which fires an action. And with that, you have the perfect round trip. Why I love this package so much is the perfect generation, uh, the perfect uh, code generation that it provides. And as you see, most of the packages that I showed you today has the Flutter favorite sign. And the Flutter favorite sign, as we all know, and as Matab once explained, shows the high bar of expectation that a Flutter team has to a package to make this package a Flutter favorite. Where does it leave us now? So we know about state management and all the different packages. And now you want to have the answer, which one is the right one for you? Or which one is the best that I should use? The best one is which solves your problem and now it highly depends on you. If you are a beginner developer in Flutter and you do your first apps, your first steps in the Flutter environment, I highly encourage you just use set state. It is good enough and you will take a long time till you come to the first problems where you have to lift the state up, where you come into problems where you have to change all the way down the widget tree and create your own stuff multiple times. Then I would recommend you to learn one of the packages that I introduced you and stick with it. If you are already an experienced developer who has some knowledge about web development most likely or any other state management tools already, for example you're coming from a Redux background, then I highly encourage you take the Redux package because it contains already the core principles that you actually need and know and you can introduce that to your team way easier. Where are the next steps? From here on, I want to create for each of the packages a specific video where I want to talk about the pros and disadvantages of each package once more. I also want to talk once more about the set state and I hope you stay with me to that journey. And now, thank you for your time for you, that you watched this video. Please, if you liked that video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, enjoy your week guys. See ya.